Hey guys, welcome to Balance Academy. Today we're going to be going over how to do a basic residential inspection. Uh, we're not going to go down a deep dive since this home, the roof has already been bought. We're just going to go look at some components here and see if we can document the damage. As you can see, it's a windy day, so please forgive me on the audio here. It is a wonderful October evening here in Indiana. So as we move along here, please, if you like this video, hit the like button below. If you learned anything from this or if you got something approved from something you learned here, please comment with hashtag approved. Typically on an inspection, I'm gonna get with the homeowner first and ask if there's any interior damage on the home. If there is, I'm gonna wanna get in there, take measurements of those rooms, take photos from far off and close up to get the damage in the pictures. If they don't have damage, I'm gonna wanna get inside and still document those ceilings. I'm gonna be looking for nail pops or any kind of existing stains so we don't get blamed for it down the road. So right now we're just gonna go ahead and get started on the front here. Uh, some of the tools that we're gonna be using today, pretty basic inspection tools. We got a measuring tape, sidewalk chalk, a couple different colors depending on white top of metals we got on the property here. Notepad, make sure we can keep notes. Got a pitch gauge. Let's verify measurement or uh, pitches while we get up there. Uh, make sure the eagle view is correct. And of course we got our bungee cord to secure the ladder. All right guys, we're gonna get started here. Every time I start off my photos, I'm gonna start off taking an overview of the front of the house. This lets me know if it's on my cell phone that this is this beginning of a new project. Every time I see the main overview of the front of the house, I know I'm hopping on to the next project here. Help me separate them. Of course, if you have a software such as Company Cam, it's gonna automatically help you keep photos organized, time stamped, and geolocated. But we're gonna be using a cell phone today since I'm not doing this every single day. Don't have a digital camera with me, even though that would be my preference, which would be to have a camera that can zoom, get some better photos without having to get up there every single time. But we're gonna start at the front of this elevation. I'm gonna take an overview and I'm gonna talk you through what I'm doing from there on. Let's get my camera open. I'm gonna get my overview. I'm gonna try and get as much of this house in the picture as possible, including my cameraman. Then we're gonna move on to the left side of that front elevation. Every elevation, I'm gonna repeat this process from left to right. Starting from the front elevation, working counterclockwise around the house, front elevation, right elevation, rear elevation, left elevation. You'll see that in insurance paperwork, they do the same process. I just try and replicate it. And I do this the same every single time. So it's easily repeatable and I can easily train it. So first thing I'm gonna look at here is the gutter. I do see some dings on this gutter from hail. So I'm not gonna get up and just take a close up of that damage. I wanna show where that gutter's located. Is it one story, two story? Where's it at on the house? I'm gonna move my way up here. And I'm gonna mark some damage. And I'm gonna place the chalk flat on here and just rub it across the dent that I see. If the dents are a little bit lighter, you can always rub your hand on here to feel for the dents themselves. These are actually sticking out pretty well. And also note that these gutters are painted. They've been painted to match the trim of the house. Uh, so that's something that we're gonna wanna be aware of. These will not come factory the same color here. So now that I got the standoff showing where this gutter is located, let's get our close-ups of the damage. Take multiple hits. If you're only getting dents down low on the gutter, the adjuster is going to be a little less likely to accept it as they're going to assume that it was a weed eater or lawnmower that chunked it up there. Don't, I'm not saying don't document it, but try and get something that's up a little bit higher so you don't have to have that argument with them. As, moving along here, I'm going to try and line up with the gutter See if I can see any hits right off the bat. If there are hits that I can see, I'm gonna mark it and then uh, move on down and keep documenting where it's at. We come to this garage door here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be running my hand on it and looking for any kind of dents, um, using the glare of the sun to see if it can pop it out. This garage door actually looks really good. Um, a nice little tip that if it is a sunny day out to help the dents show up a little bit better is ask the homeowner if you can borrow their hose wet down the door and you should be able to see those dents pretty easy. If not, you're gonna to have to feel around quite a bit, see if you can hit, hit, uh, find any hits. If you do, use the chalk to mark it and take a photo of it. Make sure to get that standoff photo again, showing where it's at on the door, which panel it is. So when it comes to writing that estimate and having that conversation with the adjuster, you can easily pinpoint the damage for them if they missed it. So moving on down, I'm gonna walk this gutter as I'm moving along. This house doesn't have any door wraps, so I'm, uh, it's uh, all painted wood. So we're just focusing on soft metals as we're moving down since I don't see any hits on the wood itself. And uh, the gutters actually don't look too bad on this. I see some uh, dents from where they overdrove the spikes a little bit. 
uh, but I'm not seeing any hits. I'll definitely check when I get top side, check that uh, top edge of the gutter, see if there's any hits there. Uh, but we're just gonna keep on moving along here. When you get to shutters, um, I don't think the hail was big enough here to really damage any vinyl shutters, but you're gonna be looking for cracks in the slats itself. Any uh, fine cracks or fractures, gonna wanna definitely document that. Same process as with anything else. Take that far off and get the close up. Uh, that way, when you get back to the office, you're not just counting a bunch of shutters, don't know which one was damaged or how many of them. You can actually break it down to how many were damaged on which elevation and clear the air really quick. Uh, if not, the adjuster will have you go out and clear the air for them, which causes another trip and a delay in the supplementing process. When checking out windows, uh, this one doesn't have any metal cladding on it or window wraps. Uh, you're, I would be looking for any kind of tears or rips in the screen in this. Uh, these screens are also held in by a rubber bead. Uh, so you're gonna look if there's any sagging in the screen itself, which this one actually does have a little bit of bow to it. And I'm gonna take a picture here and we'll show it on the side view on this, show you what that bow or sag looks like. And that's gonna happen and occur when the hail hits and pushes in on this and actually pulls it loose from that rubber beading a little bit. Besides that, you're also gonna be looking at Sometimes these screens are a little bit exposed here on the edges. They can, they can have hits on the metal as well. Um, so I'm gonna show a couple photos of these, uh, showing where it's pulled the rubber beading out a little bit and it's a little bit bowed. I'm not really sure if this is directly related to hail as there's no real hits on this. It just looks like it took some abuse maybe from high winds. Maybe that with small hail did pull it out a little bit. We came to the edge of this elevation here. We're gonna mosey on over to the right elevation. Before I get started looking at any additional documentation, I'm gonna try and get my overview. Right here we have a fence that's kind of blocking the whole thing, so we're just gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna stand back, get about as much as I can in that picture here. And then we're gonna move on. Before I get my close-ups though, I'm gonna go on the other side of this fence and get a picture from the other way so I have a full overview of this side of the house. Then I'll start on the left up side of that elevation and then go on with documenting any damage that I find to it. So there is damage to this downspout. I am seeing some hits on it. Once again, it's a rinse and repeat process. Get your standoff photo, come up to the gutter, find your hits, mark them so they can show up better on the camera. These are actually pretty good hits. Don't have to look too hard. So we'll take them. And we move on. This window screen actually looks good. No tears, no sags, no bows. It's a tight screen. No dents in the metal. We're good to move on. We're also gonna check out any, what would be considered other structures on this house. We're gonna be looking at any fences or patios while we're at it. AC units if we run across them. Uh, so on wood fences, you're looking for fresh hits. Anything that burred the wood, left a dent, removed paint, removed stain. Uh, this fence is actually still really good condition. Still looking brand new. So we're gonna move on here. So once again, checking windows, make it, seeing if there's any dents. It's a pretty thick gauge metal on that. We're gonna be moving along. Checking anything that could be dent or damage. The hail on this house looked to be enough to damage soft metals. The thicker metals and vinyl siding doesn't appear to be affected. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on that. Um, we're gonna be focusing more on the soft metals and soft metal collateral damage. So let's get our overview of the back. No damage on this downspout, so no need to document it, take photos of it, just confuses the file a little bit. Checking all trim, no paint is chipped, everything looks fresh. Uh, window is a little banged up, however, this is very localized. Does not look to be from a hail damage or any kind of weather event unless the homeowner specified that there's a real reason for that. I would just say that some other event besides hail or storm damage occurred to that. So I'm just gonna move on, not really worrying about it. I do wanna document anything I see like this, any damage to siding though, any damage or rot existing to trim, uh, that just relieves us of any liability down the road saying that we damage it. A uh, homeowner could say that falling debris or someone else, one of the crews damaged their window screen, you may have to replace it. So at least having that documented in your file, it will protect you from that down the road saying, nah, that damage is already there when we did our initial inspection. 
came across an AC unit here. Uh, what we're going to be looking for AC units, this is a heavy gauge metal on top. You're really not going to, unless you have some massive ale, really coming to hitting that. I wouldn't focus on it. We're going to be looking at the fins here, see if anything was, went through it, hit them. Uh, maybe they need to be combed out. On big hail events, they'll be severely smashed in and probably need to be replaced. Uh, so we're going to move, move on here. There's not any damage to this AC unit. This window actually looks good as well. There is a little bit of bowing here. It actually looks that it was uh, just a bad install on that screen. So I'm not gonna worry about documenting it. And we're just gonna move on. So with any kind of exterior doors, uh, really what we're looking at is a softer metal. Sometimes you'll have metal wraps on here or the wood trim itself may be banged up if the hill is large enough. So once again, we're looking for any kind of impacts, chips, burrs, or any dents in the metals. Uh, this screen itself looks good, doesn't look to be affected by the storm that came here. Um, this metal is also a thicker gauge, not affected by the storm. Wood looks good condition. Um, you know, we're going to look at any kind of exterior lights. Uh, there's no major dents on this or no dents at all from actually the storm. Uh, so nothing really to document. We're good to go. We're going to get our overview photo the best we can. It's a little tight here with how the neighbor's house bumps up to it but we're going to capture everything we can now that we got the overview let's see if we got any damage i got it itself looks all right we do have a hit there on the gutter that looks to be mechanical though see if we can find a better hit that gutter actually looks good i'm going to document this but i'm going to note my file that that is not storm damage looks like someone came through and hit it with something um, so that my estimator knows not to just write for it for this purpose so I uh, went ahead and documented it for my internal notes so that my estimator doesn't see the dent there and just write for it because he thought that I wanted it replaced. Um, these gutters will have to be uh, repainted anyways to match, so we'll be good to go there. Moving on to top side. All right, guys, let's start getting up on this roof here, see what we can find. Before I get all the way up on the roof, there's a lot of data I'm gonna be able to capture uh, before I even set foot up here. Um, first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna measure these gutters, see if they're uh, five inch or six inch. Indiana, we have a pretty good mix of five and six inch gutters. For some reason, most insurance companies default to a five inch. Uh, so it's a pretty common supplement item here, and we do find it to be pretty consistent across the nation. Uh, so I'm going to throw a tape on here, get a measurement across the top of this gutter, take a picture of that, showing the end of the tape against the gutter board and the, you know, where the gutter is going to stop. Um, this house does have gutter guards, so I'm going to want to make sure to uh, take a picture of that. Probably a good reason why I'm not seeing a lot of hits on the face or the bottom side of this gutter. Um, I may see some banged up gutter guards here that we're going to have to uh, replace. Regardless, since there is gutter guards, you're gonna to have to detach and reset them to be able to allow for roof replacement. Uh, we're also gonna to wanna to lift up these shingles. Under these shingles, it's gonna tell us quite a few things. Did they use a true starter strip on here? Uh, what kind of underlayment did they install? Was it 15, 30 pound synthetic felt? Is there ice and water shield? And what, what type? Is it standard or high, high temp? Uh, is there a gutter apron or drip edge on here? Uh, so that can all be to basically told by a couple photos. And all those can be supplemental items, so it's very critical to lift these shingles, show what's under the roofing assembly and how this roof was installed originally. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that here. Without damaging the roof, it's going to be a little tough. I do have a gutter guard here, so I'm not going to be able to show the end of the tape butted directly up against the gutter board, but I can replicate it a little bit.
do a little bit of a balancing act. So these are five inch gutters. Now without cracking these shingles, you don't want to just rip them up. Obviously you don't want to cause damage while you're up here. Find a good spot you can look at. Um, unfortunately, because I do have gutter guards here, I'm going to have to remove one to see what I'm getting into here. Um, this is something you definitely want to do if you can, if they're not mechanically fastened, meaning they have screws through the top here. These seem to be just clipped in. You want to see what kind of sheathing there is here. If this was an older home, I want to know if there's one by because I need to know what to bring to the job site. There will be some bad boards you're probably going to have to replace. Um, and if there's one by on here, I'm going to want to get in the attic to see if there's any space stacking or uh, large gaps that are going to have to be addressed. There we go. I'll just remove that one. So without having to remove it all the way, I could actually still see it. So now that we got the gutter guard out of the way, we can actually lift up the shingle, see what kind of underlayment there is here. Um, I want to actually move this piece down as well. A important spot to look at when you're lifting up the shingles is right at a valley. Because not only am I going to get all the other items that I mentioned, I want to see what kind of valley liner, if one, is actually existing on this roof. Uh, because the insurance company is always going to want to pay for what is existing or the cheapest option. So obviously if there's uh, valley metal and ice and water in here combined, you don't want the insurance company just to pay for roll roofing in the valley, which in most states will still meet code. So we'll see if we can finagle this one down a little bit more. Awesome. We haven't had to remove anything. We just kind of slid everything down. Let's lift up the shingles here. And it looks like they had a three tab shingle or the actual laminate. They just turned around backwards on this roof. There is some metal flashing here in the valley. I don't think it's a... Uh... Yeah, it's not a metal valley. But it looks like we may have some ice and water shield there. I may not be able to capture it on camera, but I'm going to try and do my best anyways. Then put the notes in the file that that's probably what we have during the uh, production part of this project. That way they can uh, take that photo if necessary when they tear these shingles off. Make sure to get that documented. So I'm going to lift up the shingle, show what kind of starter strip is there. Lift that up, see what kind of felt there is. They're using metal as a gutter apron here, right here in the valley. So I can't see anything else past that valley. Um, doesn't look like there's any drip edge on this house. So that's something that we will have to write for per code. But there is some flashing here that will need to be addressed. And you'll see in these pictures when we post them up what I'm talking about. Looks like they just uh, weren't comfortable in the gutter here. Just wanted to give a little bit of extra support. And we're gonna document that the best we can without disturbing the roof itself. Put everything back, and then we're ready to go topside. Now that we're topside, the main focus is gonna be, first off, I'm gonna stand up at the ridge, try and get a 360 view of the roof itself. That way I can count components and uh, kind of see how everything's laid out here. From there, I'm going to be looking at all the different components on here. I'm going to be looking for tar, nails, any kind of caulking, anything that's going to interfere with me tearing this roof off that might get damaged. Um, I'm going to take my far offs and close ups just like we did on the elevations. Um, and that's, it's going to be a real simple roof here. So we'll have the still frames for you to see what I'm taking. You should be able to go through these photos and it look like a flip book by the time you're done seeing the full walkthrough.
All right, now that we've wrapped up on the roof, guys, we've done the exterior walk around. We've got our documentation from up top side. We've looked at all the components, got the damage that we needed. We chalked anything that we found that was hit. Uh, this house had a lot of plastic components on it, so not a lot to chalk. We did have some cracks that we took uh, photos of. What we do here, uh, after recapping with the homeowner before we leave, let, maybe if you're knowledgeable of it, let them know what you found while you're up there. Uh, some scenarios that you're gonna have to run across with the adjuster. But now we get back to the office, we wanna make sure we upload these photos as quick as possible into the system so that if you have an estimating team or maybe a third party that's doing it, they can have access to it as quickly as possible. So you do wanna have a place to store these photos, whether it be a Dropbox, internal CRM, or maybe company cam something that's organized and easily accessible and shareable. As of right now, this is a basic inspection that any sales rep should be able to do and be able to repeat very easily. So, thanks for coming along. We'll see you next time.